What's poppin' peeps? Team Money up in the house, here to do a review for Body Bags. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for last Wednesday, missing the show. Uh, it was a long day at work, and um, just a lot of shit going on at work lately, so it's been distracting me and keeping me busy, but uh, no excuses. I felt, you know, I slept through it pretty much, and uh, I had an awesome review I was going to do for Death Stalker, but I'll save it for another time because I've got a different movie I'm going to review this week. But I just wanted to apologize and also say that... Um, I wish the Fright Chick, uh, Laura, a.k.a. Laura, uh, the best of luck. Um, I didn't really get to know you, unfortunately, but I love your reviews, and I always watch them. And I'm going to miss having you on the channel. I always watch your videos way before I started doing Body Bags reviews. And, uh, you know, you were the longest member, as Derek said, and clearly you are. You've been on it forever. So the channel will miss you dearly, and um, best wishes to you in the future. I hope we can all stay in touch uh, through 22 shots of Moods and Horror. So, um... So I guess we'll get right down to the movie that I chose for this week. Um, it's a newer one, and I know a few of you guys have talked about it on the on the threads or whatever, but um, it is 13 Cameras. My apologies, I don't think it's been reviewed yet. So, um, Kind of a low-budget film from 2016. It's directed by uh, Victor Zarkov. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, and it is released by United Front Entertainment. Not sure of that company, but... Um, this is an awesome little indie flick here. Um, it was it's from 2016. It stars Sarah Baldwin, Jim Cummings, Heidi Nerdermeyer, and Neville Arkambault, who I believe um, the killer is either Neville or um, Jim Cummings, but I'm pretty sure it's Neville Arkambault. My apologies if I'm wrong. It's one of those two guys. But uh, Awesome little film, kind of a contained horror film. It all takes place in a house. Um, I'll read you the synopsis here on the back of the, the movie. It says, Claire and Ryan, a newlywed couple, move into a house across the country, only to find out that their marital ish issues are the least of their problems. Unbeknownst to them, their grim and lascivious landlord has been spying on them from day one. So, again, you kind of have your traditional contained horror film. A um, couple moves into a house. There's a psychotic landlord who's featured here on the cover. Um, awesome, awesome killer. Uh, I'll get into that later uh, for one of the pluses. Um, and he has 13 cameras set up along around the house, so he's spying on them, watching their every move. Um, and then finally we build basically to a uh, huge climax. Basically what's happening is um, Ryan is married to Claire. They're having a baby, and um, they move into this house together. Unbeknownst to Claire, Ryan is actually having an affair with one of his, I don't know if it's his co-worker, accountant, or something like that, front desk lady, at his work. And so... Um, without giving away too much, there's a huge climax, basically, that involves all of them. Uh, Claire, Ryan, the woman he's having an affair with, I forget her name, and the killer in the house. Um, so, kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, Hangman, where you've got the, the killer, and I don't know if you guys have seen that, but you've got the killer in the house setting up cameras, watching their every move, and he's, you know, little do they know he's actually in the house creeping, so very similar to that. Um... I'll also say the story kind of reminded me of a fictional uh, version of um, the events that took place. I forget, was it Colorado? Uh, recently, like within the last couple of years, the guy who was a Spanish guy who was, um, he had three, those three women um, locked in his house for like 10 years and they didn't know it. Kind of similar to that. You don't know the length of time, whatever. I won't spoil it, but it's kind of like a, a movie version of, of that actual real event. Uh, there are aspects of what happened in that house that um, happened here. I won't, I won't spoil it by saying what, but keep that in mind, especially when you watch the end of this film. Um, so, uh, real quick, this is going to be kind of a short review because I didn't really have that much, you know, to say about it. I enjoyed the film for sure, and I said uh, the pluses were, it was a good suspenseful story, um, well written, well acted, all the actors were good. Uh, I really liked the landlord. I thought he was perfectly cast for the role. He was very creepy. I'd never seen this guy before, so it was kind of a new actor introduced to me, a new face, and uh, very, very good for the role. Um, just liked how he came across on the screen. His image, his voice, his acting, everything was right on point there. Um, the death scenes, although there were a few, they were brutal. Um, one thing is, I'll say, for a minus, was that it wasn't gory, which is okay in this case because... Uh, it's kind of what you don't see, you know, you're seeing it happen, but you don't actually see it. So, in that case, I guess it would have been cool to see a little more gore. But uh, there are only a few deaths in the movie, but they're brutal. Um, and, yeah, so I guess that was a good and bad thing. Not that you don't get to see the gore, but they're brutal. They're good scenes. 
Um, and I really like the ending. I don't want to spoil it, but um, it definitely kicked ass. It was just a really good ending. Um, fun. And uh, not, I'll say this. Uh, it's not your traditional Hollywood ending. So, um, And I like that. I always like that. So, um, And I guess so. some of the minuses, just it took a while to build to the climax. I feel like the climax is basically everything, you know, all the shit goes down for the most part. A lot of it's spent building the story. You kind of see them move into the house. You get a feel for their relationship, Claire and Ryan. And then you get a feel for this third party, the girl that he's having an affair with. You get to know her a little bit. And then um, the killer. But the climb, it took a while to get to that, you know, the action basically of the film. Which is okay in this case, I mean. But it was a little long. The film, I think, was 87 minutes. So a lot of that is spent building character development and kind of just like, you know... You, you get to see what's going on with them. It flashes between, you know, Claire and Ryan and, and the girl, and then also what's going on in the house, um, because the killer's actually in the house the whole time, watching them, uh, their every move on his 13 cameras. So, um, yeah, it just took a while to build to the climax. But, um, and I said there could have been more gore. But again, it's not gonna, it doesn't hurt the film, because the kills are still good. Um, just not gory. Um... And yeah, I said the film was a little long. It was 87 minutes, which is almost an hour and a half, but, you know, the, the real action sequences happen probably in the last half hour of the film, so. That's it, guys. That's my review for 13 Cameras from 2016. Highly recommend you check this film out. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, trying to think. It's not really, what do you call it, uh, cameras, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, check it out. Highly recommend it, 13 Cameras. You can get this, um... I tried to get it at my local FYE. They did not carry it, and they don't have it. I haven't seen it at Walmart or Best Buy either. So you got to get it on Amazon. I think it's like 10 bucks, maybe 15 tops. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. Definitely 13 cameras. Catch you guys next Wednesday on another issue of Body Bags. We're horror fucking lies. Peace.